Hello and welcome to episode 36 of the Stitching Over the Days podcast. My name is Constance and I want to thank any new viewers and also any returning viewers for taking a moment out of your day to hear all about my sewing, knitting, and crochet adventures. You can find me on Instagram as Cleo, C-L-E-O-C-M-C. I also have a blog with the show notes, yarningoverthedays.wordpress.com. And I know that Ravelry has been having some issues, uh, but I am available on Ravelry as Cleo, C-L-E-O-C-M-C, and there's a Ravelry group stitching over the days. However, if you're not using Ravelry, uh, feel free to reach out to me on those other platforms because I'm very active on my Instagram, and also the Instagram is linked to my Facebook page also, if you're using Facebook also, and I'll get back with you. So today's show will come have the same layout. We'll start with the finished projects, then we'll move into the works in progress, what I'm wearing, and also some recent acquisitions that uh, I have received from some of my knitting friends, and I decided to share them with you all uh, because I have plans for those projects. So the last episode I was talking about, and I forgot to bring the pattern over here, of course. I'll be right back. Okay, as I was saying, the last episode, I was giving you an update on my Treyai cardigan. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think I completed the back and the left front and the right front. Well, I did uh, finally finish those sleeves. Um, despite quite a bit going on with my life, it was quite hectic. And I completed my Treyai cardigan, and I'm so, so happy with it. Oh my goodness. So this is a design by J. Star Moore. And it's absolutely beautiful and that is one of the colorways and it also comes in this kind of blue colorway also but you can choose your own colors which I did and I'm super happy with it so here it is And I love it so much. And this is the back. So let me get my notes so I make sure I don't forget anything. Um, this was such a pleasure to knit. So as you know, you have that, um, well, if you can see from the pattern, you have that fair eye portion on the lower portion of the um, garment. And then the top part is a uh, simply stockinette. But it gives quite a stunning result. And it's a really enjoyable project because you know you have the fair owl and it's actually a really easy uh, pattern to memorize that fair owl uh, pattern and then you have that mindless or uh, kind of relaxing stockinette portion. Now um, I did get gauged by going down one needle size for my um, cardigan and I think that the fit is just absolutely beautiful. Now I just wanted to share with you if you look at the images, which I'll have the photos and images and the twirl at the end of this video, um, and even if you saw on this uh, pattern card, then it's very important that you get those stripes on the arm to end at the right spot because um, if not, then it won't match perfectly with the ending at where the body uh, fair arm portion stops. and so. I was working up the pattern and I thought I was uh, doing pretty good and I, I I was and so you know how a pattern will say uh, repeat for six six more times then I started to second guess my stuff I was like oh am I supposed to do the repeat six more times or am I supposed to just do it six times and I think the pattern said just do it six times but I started like really just like second guessing myself and I have my nieces here with me and it's so funny uh, because right before I got to that part, you know, I was just working on the card again. And my niece said, oh, that looks hard. Is it hard what you're doing? I was like, oh, no, it's not hard. It's not hard. So then all of a sudden, I'm second guessing myself. And I'm like looking at my notes and I'm like, oh. And I'm like comparing the sleeve with the body. And she was like, it looks hard. I was like, okay, okay. I was like, this part is like maybe I'm thinking or overthinking a lot. And so I was going to rip back the sleeve. But something told me just to uh, make sure. So I like mashed it up and then also I started like looking at like the guessing from my gauge 
what the final measurement would be and I was like okay I think I'm supposed to stay with what I'm doing not doing an extra repeat but simply doing um, I think it was I'm just guessing like six repeats uh, repeating that portion six times and so I did that and I was so happy because I think the fit is perfect and I'm really really happy with where the uh, pattern sequence stops when it's next to the body and so even though I had that like moment of panic I'm happy that I just stayed with the pattern and it all worked out in the end um I other than that I didn't really have any issues and that wasn't a, ma a major issue I think I was just like working myself up but um when I was doing the finishing during the button band for some reason my right button band it wasn't as neat as the left button band Let's see if you could tell. Like you see even here it kind of slightly curves in but now it looks like the left is doing the same thing. And so what I did was whenever my button bands don't turn out as neatly what I'll do is um, well first I already blocked the pieces. What I did for this garment was I blocked the pieces by soaking, doing a full submerge in cold water with the soak wash solution and then I seamed the garment together. But of course I would have to do the button bands and neck bands after the pieces were blocked. And so because that right button band wasn't as neat, then I simply uh, pinned it to my mat and the button band and the neck band. Then I got the cold water and I sprayed it. And so I kind of did a spray blocking and it worked out really, really nicely. And um, also for seaming, I did my typical seaming. I did backstitch throughout the garment and I'm really happy with it. And um, also I'll, I forgot to say what yarn I'm using. I'm using, I use the Alistar Moore Heberdeen 2 ply. My main color is Salon Goose. This, I'll start here. The lower color is Bog Bean. The middle color is Macair and this top color here is uh, Pebble Beach and so it's just really nice um, what's amazing about this garment is you have you know the stockinette portion because it's worked um, without any color it actually feels like of course it it's not only feels like it but it is uh, the lower portion is definitely um, like a heavier weight and then you have this really light upper portion and I um, went back to an old episode of the Fruity Knitting Podcast because I know Andrea made this garment, um, the tray I, she converted it to a pullover for Andrew and he noticed the same thing and I was like that is so true so you kind of get this like lighter weight garment at the on, the on the upper portion and then it gets thicker or heavier near the bottom but it's still really really nice. And so it's not as heavy as a full color work cardigan, uh, but I still think it's going to keep me um, quite warm. And I know that I'm still going to wear it uh, quite a bit. And plus, we don't get freezing temperatures um, in South Carolina, so I'm not really worried about that. And then it's wool. It'll keep me warm. Well, that is it for the tray eye cardigan. Um, I am just beyond pleased with it. I mean, it's always such a pleasure to work up um, a Starmore project and I love just opening a new kit and delving into a new project. Um, it's always like, it feels like Christmas a bit. And so it's like, that is done. And that was, I actually had a goal to complete that um, for the spring, but I mean, we're in deep summer, but I still completed it. And so at least I finished it before the year was out. So, Let's get into the next finished project and this will be it for the finished projects for this episode because um, I didn't get like as much as I would usually um, get done but I'm still happy with uh, what I did get done. So of course when I um, worked up the tray eye cardigan I was like I would love to make a matching garment to go with it um, even though I do think that it's going to look lovely with quite a few things in my wardrobe because you know I have my green garments and even I would like it. Come on. I think it'll look nice with this. But I wanted a garment that really truly complemented the tray eye cardigan. And this past fall, I have always been on the hunt for a lightweight green corduroy. My favorite fabric to make dresses out of is lightweight corduroy. And I always wanted this uh, 
deep green but it was so hard to find i mean so hard but i'm always like always uh looking on the fabric sites and checking them out you know just like window shopping and then last fall i came upon some lightweight green corduroy and i purchased three yards of it and so when it came i was like oh that color i immediately knew that this color would be nice because i i think i mentioned my favorite color from the um uh, Alistar Moore's yarns is the bog bean color and that was my main color for my Jane Seymour and I said like, oh this green would look really nice um, with that bog bean because I thought it matched quite perfectly so then when I was working up my tray at cardigan and the bog bean is the lower color I was like oh I need to go ahead and use that fabric because I think that it'll look nice with the tray eye cardigan so I finally uh, worked up the dress and when I, I have been on the hunt for this lightweight green corduroy for years because I always knew that I wanted to match my favorite fabric with my favorite pattern. And my favorite pattern, of course, is Simplicity 2444. This is out of print and I've made numerous um, dresses with this pattern. It's such a big fave of mine. Um, it just has that classic silhouette that I love and then I really like how the darts kind of bring it the uh, um the like body portion not body the bodice portion inward and then you have that classic flare so it's just a classic fit and flare dress but i think it's just uh absolutely beautiful and that's why i love making it and so um yeah so i made a simplicity 2444 dress and i'm super happy with it i stayed with uh, my same um slight modifications uh to the dress and I think I went into more detail in the last episode if you want to hear about that because I made a grayish uh, Simplicity 2444 dress. And um, I did this exact same thing. I hunted, um, I went in my stash and I was hunting for a zipper because with this pattern, it does have an, an exposed zipper. And I went for the bright green. At first I was thinking that a black would be good. But for some reason, I just really wanted to go with the green. And I did have a black zipper in my stash. And I'm really happy with it because why not do green on green? And that's one thing I love about green. I feel like all of the shades of green complement each other so well. So that is uh, that. Let me uh, make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh, I did finish my seams with my serger. And um, I haven't changed out the thread in my serger in a long time so uh, all of the scenes have been finished with uh, white but I still think it looks good just flipping it out for you so yes my seams are finished with my with my, the white thread from my serger and there it is so I'm happy with it I love that dress so much oh my goodness i cannot wait to wear it uh, more and more and one thing about the lightweight corduroy it's actually a uh, pretty light and you can wear it almost year round or whatever the only reason i don't wear um, it as much is because even though it's lightweight it looks like it's heavy and i don't want people to think i'm wearing like because uh quite a few people thought that it was velvet uh fabric when i shared it on my instagram but it's actually corduroy so i don't want anyone to think i'm crazy <laughs> and that i'm wearing cord um velvet in the middle of the summer so i think i'll wait um a couple of months and uh, wear it um throughout the fall and winter okay i'll have those twirls for you um at the end of this video for the simplicity 2444 um yeah i'm just so happy with it i'm so happy i finally finally have a solid green dress it goes um a solid green fit and flare dress um so yes i'm happy with that so I'm going to gather together my works in progress and I'll be right back. Okay, um, if you saw the past few weeks, I've been sharing um, a few of these smaller videos, um, like shorter length videos. And one of the videos I uh, did an unboxing of some of the things that Nitpick sent me. And I mentioned that I made a request for uh, 10 skeins of the Nitpick City Tweed, which is a DK weight yarn. And this yarn is 25% um, merino wool, 25% super fine alpaca, and 20% Donegal tweed. And so I made a request for this, uh, what's the name of this color? I think it's cobalt. Of course I, oh yes, cobalt. So I made a request for this color here. 
because I thought it looked nice and I never tried the City Tweed. Of course, you all know that I'm a big fan of the Wool of the Andes Tweed and so I wanted to try this Tweed because of the alpaca content which I'm sure is going to give it a um, bit of a, a bit more drape than um, just the 100% um, wool. I think that the Wool of the Andes has 100% merino wool. Well, almost 100% because you have the Donegal Tweed too. And so I put in a request for that and they sent me the skeins. Um, and when I put in the request, I first went to my uh, Ravelry, you know, trying to see which um, books I had in my library and which project would match up with it. And so I chose a design from Kim Hargraves, one of her recent collections that she came out with the last year. Let me get to it. And the original garment is uh, worked with the alpaca classic but as you know I'm substituting it and the alpaca classic is a DK weight yarn and I felt confident um, substituting it because as long as I was able to get gauged and I knew that I'll uh, be okay and also the garment is a relaxed fitting boxy crop uh, sweater and so the fit is not very important of course it's important you know you don't want it to not fit but it's not very important so let me share it with you let's see the image is probably going to be hard to show up, but I'll try. So as you can see, as I say, it's a crop um, sweater and it's a boxy style. And I, it's a definitely a different silhouette with me for me. Um, and that's why I wanted to try it. But I also think, because I like how the model wore it with the skirt. And of course, you all know that I have mini skirts and dresses in that shape and I also think it'll look good even with a straight skirt and also with jeans so it may turn out to be a very versatile piece and I wanted to um I really like that high neck I thought that was really beautiful and elegant and not only that because I am very cold nature then it's going to be really nice to like cuddle into that neck um and so that's why I chose this project and um this is I didn't mention but this is from Kim Hargrave's Covet collection and so, um, yeah, last, yesterday I cast on the project. I, ha I didn't get far. Um, this is all I've done. And so that's the bottom band there. And you can kind of get an idea of, I'm going to have eight inches of positive ease. And I was able to get gauged by going down one needle size, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I really wanted to use the needles that Knit Pick sent me to try them out and report back to you. I think they're called the Coco Bolo needles. But because I wasn't able to get gauged with the smaller size needle, and the smaller size needle in their needle sets is a four millimeter. And because I had to go down to a 3.5 millimeter, yes, I had to go down to a 3.5 millimeter to get gauged, then I simply um, pulled out my trusty Knit Picks um, nickel plated needles, which I've been using for years. And typically, um, for most of my projects, you will see that purple cord. Um, then you would know that. And I have another Knit Pick set that has a green cord. But as you all know, that, um, well, I'm not sure if you know, but uh, this is the, these are my go to needles that I use all the time. Um, so, yeah, so far, so it's all going really well. Um, with the project. I'm loving the feel of the yarn. It feels really nice and um, I'm curious to see how it holds up over uh, the years and after much wear because I think that I'm going to, it's going to be one of those sweaters that you really reach for all the time, especially on the weekends or when you're traveling. Um, so we'll see how it goes and I can't wait to report back to you all um, on that. Um, on the Hanker sweater by Kim Hargraves. Okay, so that's that for that work in progress. And I have another garment that I recently started back working on actively. So technically I have two active um, garments on the needles. And I just have to say, I really kind of get a bit overwhelmed by having too many works in progress because last night I could not focus on what I wanted to work on. I was like, oh, maybe I should work on my hanker pullover. Uh, but then I was like, oh, I really want to make more pro progress on my... Uh, Mary Queen of Scots by Alistair Moore and so I feel like I spent like over 30 minutes trying to 
decide which project to pick up and I was like and this is why I don't like having a lot of projects on the needles because it's really hard for me to divide my time but I recently picked my Mary Queen of Scots uh, back up and when I shared um, when I did the book review on the Tudor Roses book I think that I had just the lower portion done about this much but I recently completed the back and oh my goodness how gorgeous is this turning out you guys oh, I love it so much <laughs> it is so 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 beautiful I um, I'm just loving it. I think the colors are just so rich and they're so luxurious and I just can ima I can just imagine wearing this um, and I'm not going to even have to make um, a garment to go with it um, because I um, like place the uh, back portion against the tan corduroy uh, simplicity 2444 dress that I made for my Jane Seymour and it looks so beautiful together and I just really really want to finish this that's why I was having a hard time because I was like oh I really should uh, work more on my hanker uh, by Kim Hargrace but I was like I really want to complete my Mary Queen of Scots um, because I'm having so much fun with it like I put it down because I was a bit bummed about us not going on our trip to England and Scotland but I got over that and now that I picked it back up, I'm just like really ready to finish it. So who knows, maybe the next podcast I will have a finish for you all. I hope so. Uh, because this just wants to hold all of my attention. And I already like made plans for my weekend to focus um, completely on my Mary Queen of Scots. And my weekend goal is to complete the left front and the right front. And I hope to do that. And then next week, I hope to work on the sleeves. And you know how it goes. Now, I know that the finishing... Oh, I'm just talking because I'm so excited. Now, the finishing of Alistair Moore's um, Garments and Tudor Roses, I always just have to set aside a day or two because uh, I know that with the Jane Seymour, it took two days to do the... Uh, collar to do the button bands and you know to do all of the finishing the weaving in of the ends and if you look at the mary queen of scots it has a really fancy collar it's beautiful and that collar i think it may take a while so i'm just going to set aside an entire day or two and also the button band is quite fancy to um uh, what you call that work on this and oh I didn't let's when I talk about the buttons um the, I already have buttons for this um cardigan with the Mary Queen of Scots and I'm going to use the same buttons that I use for my tray eye cardigan now the buttons for my tray eye cardigan I found a lot on Amazon and I was just looking for a 15 millimeter buttons and that was one of the options and I chose it because if you look at the image those are the buttons that they use um, on the sample. And I also thought that that color would perfectly match the second color. And also it definitely matches the upper um, Pebble Beach color, but I thought it looked perfect with the Macare color. Okay, so I'm getting distracted. But I have um, quite a few of those buttons left over. And so I'm going to use those buttons for the Mary Queen of Scots because um, let me see if I can get closer. Do you see that corn crate color? I think that's going to go really nicely uh, with the cardigan. Oh, and I'll tell you, um, I'm using again Alice Starmore's um, Heberdeen. And this garment is worked with the two ply, the Heberdeen two ply and the three ply. So on the bottom, you have the fingering weight two ply. And then this upper portion is the uh, three ply. And so my colors are, my main color is Tormentil, which is, goodness, I love that color so much, and Golden Plover and Corn Crate. And um, that Corn Crate color, I, I think it's going to look really nicely with my tan um, Simplicity 2444 dress that I made to go with my Jane Seymour because those diamonds in the Jane Seymour um, were made with the Corn Crate color. And I think that's going to look... Uh, really really nice together and um oh I want to say you know that green um dress I put it on my um mannequin and I always have the Jane Seymour on my mannequin and it looks so beautiful together and so I just can't wait to uh wear that outfit the Jane Seymour with my green dress okay I digress uh so yes I did start the right front for the I haven't 
gone far. Uh oh, it's going out of focus. There we go. So I haven't gone far, um, but I'm going to work on this tonight and hopefully I'll uh, make more progress with the uh, right front for my Mary Queen of Scots. So yes, that project is um, going along so wonderfully. I'm having so much fun with it. And I just really have that drive now to really finish it. I just really, really want to finish it uh, in the, by, before the end of the month of August. Before the end of August, I want to finish it. <laughs> um, so yes, where are my notes? Okay, so that's it for my um, current works in progress. I want to share what I'm wearing and then um, we'll end with my recent acquisitions. So I'm wearing my Sherry Cardigan. This is a design by Kim Hargraves from her Honey Collection. I shared it about a couple of episodes back. And I'm wearing it with my uh, Simplicity 1873 dress. Uh, and I really like this combination um, quite a bit. and. Um, I wear this cardigan, I've been wearing it quite a bit, um, especially, um, I think that it looks kind of professional, uh, but it's still really a really less uh, fitting cardigan, I mean it's comfortable, but I think it looks professional, and I wore it like when I gave a presentation, a Zoom presentation uh, for the Civil Rights Center, and I just like wearing it when we have our meetings, because I think the collar makes it look, uh, yeah, really put together, and so I really, really, uh, like this and then also it's the summer and so it's nice to have a short sleeve um cardigan and um i made this yeah earlier in the spring i think during the early days of the quarantine who would have thought that we still be um uh, in the quarantine <laughs> so yes okay i'm going to hit pause and i want to um gather together my goodies to share them with you all i'll be right back so as you all know, I participated in the Lily Cake Makes um, Knit Along. It was her first knit along and I made the Be Thankful cardigan, which I shared in a previous episode. Well, the knit along ended and you guys, I won. Can you believe this is the first time I've won a knit along? I've entered so many over the years, but I was happy that I was picked. And so the package arrived yesterday and it was very exciting. And so I was like, oh my goodness, I cannot wait and, um, to open it and I can't wait to share with you all what came in the package. So first of all, this cute project bag from Eden Cottage Yarns came. It's so adorable. And so I love that. And then also three mini skeins of the Eden Cottage um, Yarns and I love this because they're in shades of green and you have this beautiful neutral which is a gray. And um, these minis, let me read a bit. They are 100% superwash, which is a really good thing. And um, let's see. Yeah, and there, it is merino wool. And so I'm not sure what I want to do with them yet. I was thinking it'll be perfect um, for contrast um, toes and heels for socks, which I haven't made a pair of socks in a while. Um, or I was thinking, should I start one of those... Uh, fingering weight blankets because I have yet to make a blanket um, with the minis. I mean, because that would be fun. I know that Little Drops are wonderful. She's really great about uh, using up her mini skeins and also her, her leftover um, fingering weight yarns. And so maybe I'll go um, and look for some ideas um, on her um, podcast and her vlogs. I think currently she's working up, and this is Allie of Little Drops of Wonderful. Currently she's working up, I think that she calls it her um, ugly blanket, and she's using just scrap yarn. And also I know that the Potter and Bloom podcast, um, she made this, uh, I think it was beautiful, but uh, she just like randomly used mini skeins and scrap yarns and made this beautiful shawl. So maybe I'll do something like that. But I don't know, I have to um, go in my stash to see what leftover fingering what yarn I have. But I just want to do something really special with it because it's so beautiful. And so, um, it also came with a lovely note from um, Lily Kate. It was so beautiful. And also tea. I mean, I love tea. And <laughs> so, I was happy to get that. I think the package was so lovely. And so, now it's just a matter of um, figuring out what to do with those um, mini skeins. Um, if you have any ideas, let me know what you do with your um, mini skeins of yarn. 
Okay. And then I have another um, knitting friend on, um, we've only met through Instagram and we've been following each other for years on Instagram, um, you know, chatting and um, doing direct messages. And uh, this is Meredith and she's known as um, Mir, M-E-R-E -E underscore Berry on Instagram. And so I just feel like we're kindred spirits. Um, we just really connect and also we have the same um, style in terms of the patterns we flock to, the fabric types that we flock to, the projects. A lot of the things that she made, so I'm like, oh, I want to make that, I want to make that. And so anyway, um, Meredith reached out to me and her, oh, I follow her mother also, Cindy Souls. Is it Cindy, C-I-N-D-Y underscore Souls on Instagram? And so they made me a project bag that is gorgeous. Now, you all know, and Meredith is a big fan of Rifle Paper Company also. I'm a huge, huge Rifle Paper Company uh, fan. I mean, I have the pens, the pencils, the fabrics. Um, I'm wearing Rifle Paper Company today. I mean, I don't even think about how much I wear it. I mean, the planner that I'm working from is Rifle Paper Company. So when I saw this, I was like, oh my goodness, it's a Rifle Paper Company fabric project bag, and it's so beautiful. And the inside, even has pockets it's oh my goodness i love it so much and so i want to cast on um a project and i cannot wait to put it in this bag and um just put it to use and so i'm thinking definitely if i do the shawl or a pair of socks then i'll definitely be using this for that but um it doesn't end there and also i received a lovely card from meredith also and her um, mother in that package and the car was Rifle Paper Company. <laughs> and so she also contacted me because um, she wasn't using um, this yarn. Um, she was doing a D-stash. And this is called Ulysse uh, de Reroom Natura. If I'm not mistaken, I think that this is Spanish. So um, I'm trying to pronounce it the correct way. And so she was um, doing a D-stash and she knew, like we just know each other, um, she knew that I really love woolly yarn and if you've been following this podcast a while, I love woolly yarn, like authentic uh, true wool. And so this is a sport weight yarn and so she sent me uh, some skeins and so I have a lot of, over a thousand yards of this main color here, which is so beautiful and it is called... Um, Gannett. And then um, some contrast colors she sent were uh, this go beautiful gray Goland color. And I'll just quickly pull the other contrast colors together for you all. And there was a lighter gray in here. And here are the others. So um, as soon as I saw the amount, I knew what I could work up. And this is a project that has been on my radar for quite a while. And it is another Kim Hargraves uh, project. And it is uh, the Honored jacket from her Steel collection. And it is so beautiful. And so because that um, project uses three skeins, I mean three colors, I'm going to go with this for the main color. I'm going with the gray for my contrast. And I'm going with this blue, which is I think is called Lagoon, for my second contrast. So you can get an idea of the uh, jacket and um, I'm planning to do that um, I wanted to cast it on immediately but after I finish my Mary Queen of Scots I think that I'll uh, at least do the gauge swatch and start on that because I really want to delve into that uh, pretty soon or maybe I might wait a bit deeper into the fall to start it and finally I was contacted by Pearl Soho, and I've been following Pearl Soho, oh my goodness, before I was even a good knitter, but I was like following the blogs because the blogs were really big uh, back in the early 2000s, and I used to just love their blog. I haven't visited their blog much, but I followed them on Instagram, and I love their Instagram, and I love their free patterns, and so um, they asked if I would be interested in some of their yarn. <laughs> yes, and so of course I said yes. And because I have a, um, I have plans to make the Avenheim 
is that how it's pronounced? Avenheim Cardigan or Avenheim Cardigan by Lily Kate Mates. And it's um, being released soon, I think, uh, maybe this weekend. Um, so it's like this really elegant um, fitted cardigan that has a statement mohair sleeve. So I chose this beautiful deep plum as my main color. And for the sleeves, I chose this color. Now this is Pearl Soho's, the mohair is Tussock or Tussock. And it's 60% super fine care mohair and 40% silk. And that's enough for the uh, sleeves. And then this fingering weight is called Posy and it's 75% super wash merino. 15% cashmere and 10% nylon. Oh, that sounds so amazing. And so I love the rich berry color because I'm hoping to um, cast this on um, actually before the honor jacket. And so I'm hoping to cast this project on, um, what are we in? We're about to be into August. And then I want to complete, <laughs> I'm just working out my schedule right now. I want to complete the Mary Queen of Scots before August is out and maybe cast this on before the end of august and i'll have something to share with you all on the next um podcast on how that is going and then hopefully i'll complete the hanker sweater by september because that's when the temperatures will begin to drop and i would love to have this because of that rich berry color it's going to be perfect for uh, the holidays and also the deep winter even though I don't know how things are be going because, you know, we usually would have events and things that we go to um, over the holidays. And I think this would be perfect for that or um, even going to places um, with my um, work and job, you know, wearing it with a simple uh, business skirt. But I'm going to finish it and, you know, it'll be ready for when it's ready. So that's my plans for that. And um yeah, so those are some of my uh, recent acquisitions. Uh, they really all just made me smile. And, you know, just getting um, little goodies from fellow knitters and then seeing those personalized notes. It always, I think, forms a deeper connection because, yes, you know someone and you could chat with them um, via Instagram or through platforms. But having a personalized note, it always, I think, is so uh, special. Okay, you guys, that concludes this episode. Thank you for um, bearing with me uh, through it, if you're still here. And I'll see you all uh, next month for the podcast. Maybe I'll have a few shorter videos in between time. And I'll insert those uh, twirls of the finished garments uh, here. All right, bye.